Like, um, first of all, how are you guys all feeling? Really well. Good. Um, uh, practicing uh, and uh, practicing uh, well. We're healthy, and uh, we look forward to getting to Greensboro, Hank. What kind of concerns do you have? Like, when you guys came back out of a pause and played Georgia Tech and lots of other teams when they've come out of a pause have not been kind of up to speed and have gotten – I think Louisville lost by 45 to North Carolina. What kind of concerns do you have that your time away from live action is is an issue? Well, I mean, it's a concern now. I mean, I, let's be uh, let's be honest. But um, the difference here is that uh, we have um, we've continued to practice uh, going into Georgia Tech, and Hank, I've said it uh, five times now. Um, I don't want uh, to. Um, uh, you know, blame anything um, on uh, what uh, what you know Georgia Tech did in here. They they fanned our rear ends. Um, they played better than we did. Uh, so I never ever would uh, blame you know our our situation in the Georgia Tech game uh, with uh, with what happened. That's taken away from uh, from what those guys accomplished. I'm not doing that. But I do feel better going into our league tournament. Uh, having had the uh, a, a opportunity to uh, to continue to practice, and um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's March. Kids want to play, and um, to have not played in I think ten days, whatever it'll be when we uh, when we play whomever we play on uh, on Thursday, um, you know, we look forward to it. But uh, you know, time will tell. Thanks, Mike. David Teal. Mike, how peculiar is it to be preparing for a conference tournament in which each of your first two opponents could be teams that you have not played this season? It's uh, it, it, that's different now, David. I mean, that's never done that. Uh, having said that, you know, we were scheduled to play. Florida State twice. At least one of those, uh, we had um, we had done quite a bit of uh, work in terms of our scouting. We had done quite a bit of work with uh, with North Carolina uh, in that uh, in that preparation. Notre Dame, we played twice. Wake Forest, we played twice. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that's that's a new one for uh, for me. I can assure you of that. And then you had the bubble experience up in Connecticut to start the season. Do you think just having been through that will help you with the way things will likely be set up during postseason? David, I haven't thought of it in those, uh, in those terms. <laughs> um, I think uh, not, you know, obviously not being in Greensboro yet, that uh, Greensboro will be much like uh, Uncasville. Um, I get the impression uh, just uh, hearing uh, colleagues uh, talk about it that uh, Indianapolis will be, you know, times 10 in terms of uh, protocols, in terms of, you know, you're on your floor. I mean, you, it's not like you, you know, roll out of bed at seven in the morning and want to go down and get a uh, Starbucks coffee. You're not doing that. Um, you move as a group. Uh, I I think uh, Greensboro, you know, we'll have uh, a floor in that hotel to ourselves. We'll have our meeting room, our meeting space on that uh, same floor. Um, you know, I don't know that the uh, Uncasville experience will uh, will help us. Uh, however, we've been there and we have uh, been through that, and it was, uh, you know, it was it. it they did everything possible to keep uh, everyone safe, as I'm sure uh, you know. The ACC will uh, will do the same, as I'm sure the NCA folks will uh, will do the same. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I hope we're a part of that uh, great tournament uh, next week. Mark Berman. Good morning, Mike. Congratulations on making a uh, coach of the year. Thanks. Um, uh, can you kind of just bring us up to date? What actually happened earlier last week to set off this whole contact tracing uh, in motion? And then how did things kind of improve from where I guess you did not have enough 
players available to play NC State last weekend to where now I guess you're all good to go for Thursday. We didn't have a, a positive test, but uh, in, in working with uh, our local health department, they thought that it would be in everyone's best interest in terms of uh, you know the health of our uh, student athletes in terms of the health of uh, our student body, our coaching staff, and the people that uh, our team comes in contact with that we, uh, that we pause. It was uh, all a contact tracing issue that so many of us uh, have, uh, have dealt with. But, um, you know, as I've said uh, before, we, uh, we did have the opportunity to continue uh, to practice, uh, but that was what our team doctors, what uh, our local health department recommended. And, you know, needless to say, in, uh, in this uh, environment, uh, we had no choice. We had no choice but to, uh, uh, but to uh, follow their, uh, their guidelines. I guess, why couldn't you play against NC State? And I guess, do you have more, I guess, did you have more guys available now than you did uh, last week? Oh, again, the contact tracing. I mean, those uh, rules and regulations are pretty clear cut. Uh, they tell you to, uh, uh, to um, you know, uh, you're, not, uh, you're not playing out of respect for NC State and, you know, whomever else. And that's, uh, that's what we did. Uh, I guess, did you expect to have all your guys uh, available on uh, Thursday? Will we have all of our guys available on yeah, Thursday? I mean, yeah. Are you expecting to expect have yep. that? Yep. And then I guess just to clarify, did this, was, was this whole thing started because did someone, uh, was it a family member, a, a wife, a girlfriend, uh, you know, uh, somebody tested positive, set this whole thing in motion, I guess? Or why did you have to have the contact tracing, I guess? Was it uh, not someone in the program testing positive, but someone related yeah. you know kind yeah. of thing I, 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 we had uh, we had some guys come in close contact with uh, someone that uh, tested positive thank you david cunningham hi mike uh i was gonna ask a little bit about uh players um i know you said you were hopeful that Jalen would be available for the ACC tournament what's his status how's his ankle doing david i don't think he'll be available um I don't think he'll be available. Uh, everybody else, um, everybody else is uh, is, you know, healthy and uh, and ready to roll. Thank you, Mike Barber. Yeah, Mike, I don't know if you're willing, but w could you elaborate at all? Jalen, is his situation kind of a, a done for the year thing, a wait and see thing? Uh, well, can you give us any more details about what Jalen's dealing with? Mike, I think uh, I think uh, the best I could give you is um, uh, I think uh, you know I, I think this weekend is uh, is doubtful. Um, the NCAA tournament, if we were fortunate enough to be invited to that great tournament, and we advanced, uh, maybe, but um, uh, not um, not anytime soon. I I, uh, I can I can say that. I know you. Uh... You like to say things the right way and, and carry yourself the right way, but you don't have any doubt that you've earned a CAA bid, do you? Um, you know, Mike, I, you know, doing it a long time. This is new. This is new to me now. I mean, I, I come from a a league where I knew I had to go to Asheville and win uh, three games. Um, I am not uh, going to be one of those, uh, you know, blathering, uh, sounding like a petulant kid um, trying to prove his uh, team's worth. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Um, you know, it's there on paper. Um, we've had a, we've had a really good year. I've got a really good team. Uh, so, you know, I'll leave that up to, uh, up to the selection committee. I, uh, I have great trust in uh, those folks. They'll get it right. One more for me, multiple coaches in the league, when they talk about what you've been able to do this season, they point to the connectedness of your defense. Uh, could you speak to, did you see this uh, big a jump defensively coming this season? And then could you speak to Wabisa Beattie's role in that defense? I, I thought we'd be, I thought we would be pretty good. We weren't very good last year. We, we were, um, uh, we, we had, um, we had some good moments defensively. I thought this team just just simply because of uh, the you know better size up front with uh, Keve and uh, and Mutz and 
you know, pencils back and he's healthy and uh, he helps us. He knows how to play. Tyrese Radford is a really, really good uh, defender. Um, this has been a connected team. This has been a, uh, you know, a, a, just a great team to coach, uh, you know, along those lines. They'll get after you now. They'll chew on you. Um, and I uh, hope that that uh, can continue on uh, on Thursday in, uh, in Greensboro. Beatty sets the tone for all of it. He's like a brick wall. Um, and getting the ball stopped in transition. And he does uh, such a really good job against, um, you know, that, uh, that matchup. Um, did a terrific job on uh, an Alvarado and, and others uh, as we've uh, gone along, you know, through the, uh, through the league. Um, he is, he, Mike, he's a, he's a terrific defender. Um, and I think the average fan takes for granted, um, you know, getting the ball stopped in transition. I don't take that for granted. That's hard. And he does it as well as anybody I've, uh, I've had. And uh, we'll certainly need those, uh, those attributes on uh, Thursday, whether that's uh, Caleb Love, whether that's uh, Prentice Hub, or whether that's uh, Davion Williamson. Um, feel very comfortable with him uh, on, that, uh, on that ball. He's terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Jermaine Farrell. Well, good morning, Coach. Uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on your ACC Coach of the Year honor. It was well-deserved, in my opinion. Uh, I got to ask you, what does that honor mean to you personally, and what does it mean for the program? Because obviously, I mean, you, you've won Coach of the Year honors in the Southern Conference, but what does it mean for you to get it even in the ACC? It's a team award, Jermaine. Um, I'm like an old dog. I like to have my head scratched, uh, but I very quick, quickly recognize um, without Will Sabidi and Tyrese Radford and Kevin Aluma and all those guys, I'm, I'm not much. Uh, I'm not. Um, I think of my staff. Uh, I think of Ch uh, Chester Frazier, who is a star and is going to be a head coach. He's not going to be here much longer. Uh, Christian Webster is going to be a head coach. Uh, Kevin Giltner and and, uh, and others. I am uh, I'm a part of it, but I've got I've got unreal people around me, and I am uh, quick to recognize uh, you know the incredible contributions that uh, that each uh, one of them makes. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jermaine. Travis Wells. Hey, coach. I just want to ask you about. Uh, Justin Mutz and Keve having an opportunity to play in the ACC tournament for the first time after the, the years that those two kids have had and to kind of show, I mean, the rest of the league, if they haven't seen it in the country, kind of what kind of players they are and, and that they can compete in this tournament and, and in this league. I think it's a, I think it's a great, it is a great pair, uh, Travis. I mean, it's, those two kids have had great years. Justin Mutz has had a really, really good year for us and, um, just a good basketball player, uh, you know, for uh, Justin to come from uh, the Colonial, for Keve to come from the Southern Conference, like myself, uh, the opportunity to play in that great tournament uh, will be, a, you know, will be a mountaintop experience for, uh, for them as it will be for me. I hope, I hope we can stay around a little bit longer than we did a year ago, I can tell you that. But um, uh, those two kids are are really, really good players. They're better people. Uh, I know they're uh, as excited as, uh, as I am to uh, get down there tomorrow and, you know, um, begin our preparations to uh, compete at, uh, at nine o'clock. Holy cow, fellas, 9 p.m. And we all know that it's not going to start at 9 p.m., but we'll, we'll be ready and uh, fired up when, uh, when the thing goes in the air. Can you elaborate just on that, the, the challenge of, you know, just kind of hanging around the hotel all day and watching other games and other people play and, and having to, to get ready to go that late? It's, it's terrible. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's, it's awful. Uh, now I've had two NCAA tournament games in my, uh, in my career that started at uh, nine 50 and those, you know, kick off at 10, 15, 10, 20. Um, you know, I, what you don't want to have happen is it, uh, is that, um, you wear yourself out, uh, the nervous energy and, uh, the pacing and, uh, the, the, just the level of excitement, then you hit the floor and you're, you know, you're, you're less than what, uh, you, uh, expect to be. Um, so, you know, to keep them, uh, keep them relaxed, we'll go over, um, Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon, I think it is, um, 
at that uh, facility next door to uh, the Coliseum and, you know, uh, go through our regular routine, just push everything back a little bit in, in preparation for, uh, for, that, uh, for that start, whenever that might be. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Travis. Dean Wong. Hey, Mike, kind of following up on that a little bit. What have you learned this season with all the, the pauses and games being canceled at the last moment, not knowing whether you will or won't play? Um, what have you been able to do to kind of keep, keep the players' attention focused and, and keep it fresh? Uh, is there anything you can do outside of just practice and when watching film? Uh, it's been, uh, it, it's been, Gene, needless to say, it's been um, really challenging. I mean, the number of times I've had to go down there, um, we're walking out the door, heading to Charlottesville. The buses are parked. I'm literally walking out to put my bag on uh, on my chair, and and we hear that um, that game has been uh, postponed, uh, and just the deflated look on their faces when uh, you know when that uh, when that happens. That's that's hard, and we've had to do it a number of times. I talked to Rick Barnes this morning uh, at uh, at Tennessee. Um, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, that's what uh, we've all dealt with. It's been uh, it's been difficult. I have been so impressed um, and appreciative of uh, how our guys have handled it. I mean, they bounce right back. And uh, what's next? And uh, this most recent one again. You know, it's March. They want to play. I want to. I want to coach. Um, but uh, I'm thankful that uh, you know here we are, uh, two days removed from uh, from playing again, and uh, and and we're ready to go. We're we're fired up and uh, look forward to getting down there. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Gene. Last question, Scott Cash. Coach, uh, at any tournament time, you want to be playing your best basketball when you get into tournament time, but you've played so few games recently. Is this like the great unknown for you? Um, yeah, I don't know that it's the great unknown. You know, we've, uh, we've played 20 and to be honest with you, I've, probably feel pretty fortunate to uh to have uh, to have played uh, 20. Um I'm not searching for who my you know, what my team's identity might be. I know what that is. I knew that a long time ago. Um do I uh you know uh reflect and and uh, uh disappointed that uh, that we had you know such an issue here late in the year absolutely but um you know, that's where we, uh, what we, what we had to deal with, what a lot of people have had to deal with. And uh, we look forward to uh, the next challenge and that's North Carolina, Notre Dame or Wake Forest. Thanks coach. Thank you. All right. Thanks coach. Thanks guys for joining us today. Thanks everybody. Have a nice day.